Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today's video has been requested by you guys, the viewers. So hopefully you will enjoy it. In short, many of you have requested that I use the Radeon RX 7900 XTX for some CPU testing as you want to see how that data compares to the 4090 data that we already have. So that's what we'll be doing. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS Store and their new Locker Store 6 Gen 2 AS6706T. With its quad core CPU, it offers easy backups to numerous devices and cloud services, and included is dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which can be combined in SMB multi channel for up to twice the bandwidth. And you can even upgrade to 10 gigabit networking via an adding card. As for the software, you're not locked down with support for third-party operating systems, while the latest version of ASUS Store Data Master packs all the features you could possibly need, including iSCSI. We've populated ours with Seagate's IronWolf 20 terabyte drives, and with the health management software, we can ensure the drives are running optimally. Then to maximize random IO performance for content creation, we're using Team Group's T-Create SSDs. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. So, having recently created a 23 game head to head benchmark between AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and Intel's Core i9 1300K, I used the GeForce RTX 4090 in an effort to reduce the GPU bottleneck as much as possible, allowing us to better evaluate the gaming performance of these CPUs. However, many of you are aware of Nvidia's GeForce overhead issue, which I explained in a two part series back in 2021, and I'll provide some links to those videos in the description below if you're interested to learn what is going on there. Anyway, this and a few other factors, such as resize or bar for example, can result in unusual performance scaling between GeForce and Radeon GPUs, depending on the CPU, game and settings used. So this is really more for science type content. It's not going to change any of the recommendations we've made previously, but it will no doubt provide us with some interesting results. And at the end of the day, you guys wanted to see this data, so that's really all I needed to hear. Now for testing, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D was installed on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master using the latest BIOS revision and DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. Meanwhile, the Core i9-1390K was benchmarked using the MSI MPG Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi with DDR5 7200 memory. Then for the graphics cards, we have the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4090 OC edition and the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 7900 XTX Vapor X, a lot of Xs there. And these cards have been benchmarked at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. So let's get into it. Starting with the Hogwarts Legacy results, we find that there's a few interesting things going on here. Firstly, at 1080p, we see that the 7800X 3D is actually 13% faster when using the 7900 XTX, when compared to what we saw with the, what should be much faster, RTX 4090. However, due to the CPU bottleneck at this low resolution, the reduced overhead of the Radeon GPU actually affords the CPU a bit more headroom, hence the higher frame rate. It's a similar story for the 1300K, which saw an 11% boost with the Radeon GPU. It's also interesting to note that whereas the 7800X 3D was 3% faster than the 1300K when using the 4090, it's 5% faster with the 7900 XTX. A minor difference for sure, but it's a clear indication that the Ryzen 7 processor is faster in this title. Then once we increase the resolution to 1440p, the results become mostly GPU limited, though the 4090 is still causing a few overhead issues for the 1300K, but that gets sorted out at 4K, and here we are 100% GPU limited, and as such the 4090 is now 27% faster than the 7900 XTX. Now retesting Hogwarts Legacy, but with ray tracing enabled, we find that for the most part the results are GPU limited at 1440p and 4K, with an apparent CPU limitation at 1080p. Interestingly, the 1300K does perform better with the Radeon GPU, though there is very little in it when comparing the average frame rate. Next up, we have Spider-Man Remastered, and here we're seeing slightly better average and 1% low performance at 1080p when using the 7900 XTX. Then at 1440p, the 7800X 3D does perform better with the Radeon GPU, while the 1% lows of the 1300K were improved, though the average frame rate does take a bit of a hit. Then at 4K, as you'd expect, we're entirely GPU limited, though again, the 7800X 3D does fare better relative to the 1300K when using the Radeon GPU. 
Then with ray tracing enabled, we find some interesting results. The 7800X3D was actually faster at both 1080p and 1440p when paired with the 7900XDX, whereas the 13900K didn't see the same great results. This also means, whereas the Ryzen 7 processor was just 2% faster than the 1300K at 1080p when paired with the RTX 4090, it was 10% faster once both CPUs were using the 7900XDX. So that's a very interesting result. The Far Cry 6 results highlight the GeForce overhead issue quite well. Firstly, we see when using the 7900XTX 1080p that the 1% lows for both CPUs are higher. I wouldn't say they're much higher, we're talking about a 7 to 8% boost, so not nothing, but not huge either. But what's really interesting here is the fact that the 7800X 3D was 2% faster when using the 4090, while the 1300K was 6% faster when paired with the Radeon GPU. This also meant that whereas the 7800X 3D was 10% faster than the 1300K when both CPUs were paired with the 4090, it was just a percent faster when both were using the 7900XTX. Then we see as we increase the resolution, the results become even more unusual as now the 7900XTX is enabling a higher level of performance than the 4090 for both CPUs. And then once we hit the 4K resolution, we are largely GPU bound, though the 7900XTX is very similar to the 4090 in terms of performance in this title. Now, the Hitman 3 results are very unusual, and they look a bit wrong, but I have triple checked them, and for whatever reason, the 1300K is much slower than the 7800X3D when using the 7900XTX. I'm not sure if this has something to do with resize or bar, unfortunately I haven't had a chance to investigate this after the initial testing, but essentially what we found was when using the RTX 4090, the 1300K was 6% faster than the 7800X3D, but when using the 7900XTX, it was 13% slower. And that's a massive performance discrepancy. And then once we reach the 1440p resolution, all the configurations are heavily GPU limited. So performance between the two CPUs is much the same. Now, another game to show this very odd type of behavior was Horizon Zero Dawn, though the results here aren't quite as unusual as the 7800X3D was consistently faster than the 13900K. Still, although the Ryzen 7 processor was 10% faster at 1080p when using the RTX 4090, it'd expect that margin to shrink with the slower 7900XTX. Yet the opposite happens, and now the 7800X3D is 20% faster, and the 1% lows of the 1300K fall off a cliff. This also means if you were testing Radeon GPU performance in this title with an Intel CPU, it could favor the GeForce GPU by widening the gap. Having said that though, this was really only seen at 1080p. The 1440p data makes a lot more sense. Here the 7800X3D was 9% faster using the 4090, and as you'd expect that margin did shrink slightly with the slower Radeon GPU to 8%. Yet another game to see the 1300K struggle with the 7900XTX at 1080p is Rainbow Six Siege, and it's another example where the 1% lows are particularly weak relative to what you'd expect based on what we see with the 7800X3D. For example, the 1% lows of the Ryzen 7 processor were 10% greater when using the GeForce GPU, but that figure ballooned out to 25% with the 7900XTX. But once again, we see that by the time we hit the 1440p resolution, the strange scaling behavior is masked by a heavy GPU bottleneck. The ACC results are fairly typical, though the 1300K was consistently a few frames faster when using the 7900XTX, seen at 1080p and 1440p before the results become heavily GPU bound at 4K with the Radeon GPU. Meanwhile, GPU scaling with the 7800X3D looks pretty much as you'd expect. The Resident Evil 4 results also look as you'd expect, at least for the most part. The only result that looks a bit out of place is the 1300K 1080p data, where we find the Intel CPU is actually faster when using the Radeon GPU. But again, this is a GeForce overhead issue, and with the 7800X 3D being faster in this game, it wasn't an issue there. The A Plague Tale Requiem results are also largely CPU limited at 1080p, and again, we see that the 1300K did perform a little better with the Radeon GPU as it reduces CPU load. It's not a massive difference. We're looking at a 7% improvement here. But other than that, the results are as expected. Despite being a very CPU demanding game, Watch Dogs Legion doesn't have any strange CPU scaling issues for us. The margins were slightly more favorable for the 7800X3D when using the 7900XDX, going from 24% faster with the 4090 to 31% faster with the 7900XTX.
Then we have the rift breaker and the data from this point is pretty much what you'd expect to find. So consistent scaling between the GeForce and Radeon GPUs. And we see that that is indeed the case here. Both CPUs are more than powerful enough to extract the maximum level of GPU performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And this is a title where the Radeon GPUs do perform very well. The 7900 XTX provided a little more headroom at 1080p, at least when comparing the average frame rate, but beyond that the data is very typical. Next up we have The Last of Us Part 1, and the results here are also fairly typical and mostly GPU limited. So there's not much to report here really. The RTX 4090 is 25% faster than the 7900 XTX at 1080p, and by the time we reach the 4K resolution that margin has extended out to 30%. The Star Wars Jedi Survivor scaling is also as expected. The margin in favour of the 7800X 3D was a little larger using the RTX 4090 at 1080p, but scaling in general was very similar. Then once we hit the 1440p resolution, the results are almost entirely GPU limited, allowing the 4090 to beat the 7900X TX by a 36% margin. The Halo Infinite results also look pretty typical, though the 7900X TX might be a bit slower than expected at 1080p, but in any case, we're looking at fairly normal scaling with no other results due to the GeForce overhead or anything like that. The Total War Warhammer 3 results also look normal with no unusual scaling between the 7800X 3D and 1300K. So we're mostly looking at GPU performance here and not necessarily CPU performance, or at least we're not finding the limits of these CPUs with either GPU. There's also nothing out of the ordinary to report in F122. The results here look almost entirely GPU limited. And it's the same story in Cyberpunk 2077, though here the 1300K does a little better when paired with the RTX 4090, while the 7800X 3D does a little better with the 7900 XTX, but we're only talking about a 4% margin in either direction. And then once we enable ray tracing, the data becomes heavily GPU limited, and therefore we're seeing identical performance with both CPUs. The second last game we have is the Callisto Protocol, and the data here is fairly typical of what you'd probably expect to see when looking at these hardware configurations. The 7900XTX data, for example, is largely GPU limited, so there's not much to report here. And then finally, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and again, the data here is largely GPU limited, especially when using the Radeon GPU, so let's go wrap this thing up. Okay, so we've just taken a look at how the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and Core i9 13900K compare across a wide range of games using both the RTX 4090 and 7900 XTX. That is a mouthful of product names, but now it's time to break down all of the data. So what would a change in GPU do for our overall data? Not much. On average, the 7800 X3D was just 5% faster than the 1300K at 1080p when using the RTX 4090. And while you'd expect that margin to shrink with what is really a slower GPU in the 7900 XTX, it actually grew ever so slightly to 7%. However, the overhead issue, which provided somewhat unexpected results at 1080p, it isn't seen nearly as often at the more GPU limited 1440p resolution. Here, the 7800X3D was just 4% faster than the 1300K when using the RTX 4090, and that margin was slightly reduced to 3% with the 7900XTX. Then, of course, the results at 4K, they're entirely GPU limited, and the results for both CPUs end up being the same. Probably the most surprising thing about all of this testing is the fact that it wouldn't really matter if we would used the 7900 XTX or the RTX 4090 for our CPU testing. The overall margins would have been much the same, and therefore we would have drawn all the same conclusions. I can only imagine the blowback had we opted to use the 7900 XTX rather than the RTX 4090 for our CPU testing. The juicy Reddit drama would have been next level. So I guess a bit of an opportunity missed there. Of course, the RTX 4090 does make the most sense for such testing, but it is nice to know that the 7900 XTX would have resulted in the same outcome. Now, on an individual level, the results were really interesting, especially in titles such as Hogwarts Legacy. Nvidia's overhead issue really did rear its ugly head in that example, and it was surprising to see that even when comparing two very powerful CPUs, that there was up to a 20% performance discrepancy seen when looking at the 1% lows. And previous testing done back in 2021 did reveal that GeForce GPUs could result in a 20% performance penalty for CPU limited gaming, and this was typically highlighted with weaker CPUs. But seeing this in Hogwarts Legacy with top-end gaming CPUs was really interesting, 
And finally, having a truly high-end Radeon GPU makes exposing the overhead issue a lot easier. And this is likely going to be an even bigger issue for slower CPUs, and maybe that's something we can look at with a more updated games list later on in the year. For now, though, I hope this testing has satisfied those of you who requested it, and I'm going to wrap this one up and get back to testing the Ryzen 5 5600X 3D. And I might even have the 7900GRE by the time you're watching this video, I suppose. Anyway, hoping to have that in the next few days so we can get a video out on it next week. But I'm going off topic here. I guess the point I'm trying to make is you should subscribe because there is more CPU and GPU content to come if you hadn't sort of suspected that would be the case anyway. Anyway, if you appreciate the work with your power unboxed, then feel free to sign up at our Patreon or Floatplane account. Links in the video description. If you do so, you'll get some pretty cool perks in return. Access to monthly live streams to myself. We have an exclusive Discord server for members only. Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content. A few cool things there, so check that out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.